Hey guys, and welcome to the Online Prosperity Show. My name is Jason K. Williamson, and I'm gonna be dropping absolutely so much golden knowledge in this, and I want you guys to get on. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity TV Show, and today we've got none other than Jason. Jason, how are you doing, my man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks. How are you? Good. Now, Jason is recognized as a leading e-commerce e and email marketing expert. Um, in as little as six months, Jason has actually helped his clients to generate a staggering 1.3 million in email marketing alone. All right, we're gonna ask you about this, uh, Jason. And he's adding more than 15% uh, to his client's revenue with smarter and more relevant emails. Now, this is utilizing uh, powerful automated campaigns and targeting unique customer behavior and also delivering high converting email sequences. Now, Jason has risen through the e-commerce world and is rapidly doing this, and this is just the beginning. We thank you so much for uh, taking your time to join us on the show today, Jason. No worries, man. I appreciate being here as well, man. You've got a very extensive portfolio. Tell us a little bit about yourself that I missed in the introduction there. A little bit about myself, I guess, is I actually started network marketing. Um, so not a lot of people know that I started originally in network marketing, and how I got into digital marketing was I wasn't really too sure how to, like I didn't see getting leads locally as a um, you know, scalable way to really grow a business. Um, so I started looking into the online space to find out how I can get leads for my network marketing business. And from there, that's how I actually found um, information marketing. From information marketing, I went to an event in Sydney and that event um, in Sydney, there was like, hey, what can you do that nobody else can do? I was like, oh, I'm pretty good at talking and writing. There was like, okay, can you do email? I was like, you know what? I can learn. And here I am today. <laughs> it, came from, it came from network marketing. You know, a lot of people knew that I did network marketing to start with. And um, yeah. And also information marketing was my very, very first background. And, and I wanted to strongly move into information marketing, but I couldn't do it because I couldn't be one of those people giving advice without results. I didn't want to be that person. So this has been my journey so far. Great stuff. Well, obviously there was a few influences in between. Okay. Would well, you pinpoint it to somebody specific or is it just how your uh, work just, you know, evolved? Yeah, definitely. So there's, there was a bunch of influences right in between all of that. Um, what, one would be, it has to be Russell Brunson. So Russell Brunson in the online space, highly, highly inspired me to do exactly what I'm doing today, mainly because I saw what he was doing. I saw the freedom and I saw everything he was doing to start with is what got me into it. Um, the very first one, and he'd probably be very happy I'd say this, is he's called Dave Nelson. Um, and he was, he was the top of the network marketing company that I was working at the time. So I was able to see where he'd come from and where he was today. So that's kind of how the journey started. I saw him, he was my first influence. Um, and then I was like, how do I branch out and do this, you know, at a global scale, at a bigger scale? And then I saw, you know, Russell Brunson. He was doing the information marketing, but I saw it was something I could apply and use elsewhere. And Ray Higdon as well. Um, he was actually specifically in network marketing doing exactly what it was. I saw him. I kind of took that method and then I found Russell. And then I haven't really had many influences from there, to be quite honest. I mean, it's just a bunch of people, you know, like, just massive people like Elon Musk, uh, obviously Russell Brunson, but these are types of people that seem to move forward in the world and they just want to always forever increase like everybody around them. So they were, I'd say they were my main influences. What was your biggest frustration? Cause obviously for somebody to change, there has to be a frustration or something that's not right inside of you. Uh, from you to shift from the, net, the the network marketing was it to mm. um, you know to what you're currently doing now and then we're going to speak as to how you've helped your clients and what that has done to you um, specifically. Yeah, well, I'd like to go a little bit even further backwards because what I push push on people all the time who are people coming out of school that want to become entrepreneurs is I say don't become an entrepreneur yet because you're so young, like. I want you to first get a job. I want you to experience exactly what it is and why you should become an entrepreneur because you need to have that to feed you. Because I know a bunch of people 
that were, and Dave Nelson was one of them, he was similar to me, was that before he got into network marketing, the reason he was pushed into network marketing was because he so badly hated the life he was living as, you know, as an employee. Somebody that had to get up every single morning at five, six o'clock in the morning, and when the boss would say jump, you'd say how high, right? So that's what first initially fueled me to even get into network marketing. And then for what fueled me from network marketing to, di like to digital marketing today was the scalability, right? Because network marketing to me was too, too local. Or it's, it's definitely not too local, but at that point in time, it was way too local. And everybody I was speaking to at the time, they weren't the right prospects, right? I didn't have the right network. So I was like, how do I do that? But rapidly. How do I do that great success and momentum? Because right now I'm moving nowhere. Everybody's calling me an idiot saying like what I'm doing is not working and it's not going to work, right? It's never going to work. And I was like, you know, get stuffed. I'm going to make it work. Watch me. So then I moved into the digital marketing space where I thought I could attain more leads for network marketing. However, it opened up a different world. From there, I was like, shit, where I'm in network marketing, even though I'm getting leads from elsewhere, I have to make this process duplicable, right? So if I bring somebody into this process, I need to make sure they can still do what I'm doing right now. And I was like, okay, so that's a little bit of a, that's a bit of a tough one. Maybe I can teach them. And then all of a sudden I just saw digital marketing. I was like, uh, so now I don't need to rely on all these people underneath me. I can actually build my own business from home. I can do exactly what network marketing has promised. I can have a home-based business but I can be solely reliant on me and build a team of passionate people aiming towards the same goal, but I'm not relying on this team. You know, I can do this, not myself, but I can, because with network marketing, you gotta understand it takes a lot of people to go through because at, at that time you're picking, you're picking people up from work, right? They're from work. You're trying to pull them into entrepreneurship. These people that you're already at your digital, you know, digital agency, you're pulling people who are already entrepreneurs. You're not taking the first person who's so skeptical that doesn't realize that this can work. You're taking not fucking A, you're already at B and you want to take them to C. So it was just that bridge gap was closer and now I'm working with a team of people that all have the same goal as me and it's phenomenal. So I mean, I hope that answers your question. That's, that's been the roadmap of how I've got to where I am today and why I did it. Great. I like when you mentioned that with digital marketing, there's scalability and you ran, or you ran out of neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah, sell, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> to sell your products too. Great. So obviously with that scalability, it comes a lot of challenging. You got to keep on top of uh, trends. You got to keep on top of what's happening. How do you manage your time, your productivity and all that stuff together? Is there apps or tools that you can recommend us to have a look at? Or um, So I just, because my space is so different to a lot of people, mine's a lot of email, mine's just a lot of research, right? So a lot of the time, the way I stay on top of things is I'm just, first of all, I'm aware. I'm aware of where I am and what space I'm in. And that is so, so completely important for anybody. Please, 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 please do not try and branch out into other shit and do millions of different things. The reason why I'm so successful today is because I found a lane and then I found like a lane within the lane. Mm -hmm. I did email marketing. So I found a lane which was email marketing. And then what I did was I found a lane inside that lane, which was e-commerce email marketing. So now I know exactly where I am, right? Now that I know where I am, I can know where I'm going. So now that I know where I'm going, I can see so far ahead of me that I know exactly who is already where I want to be. So all I do is simply follow them. I get on their email lists. I get on their blogs. I get on their forums. And I just keep continually following the people that are doing what I want to do and using them, the modeling method, right? Every time I see somebody do something that catches my eye, I go, shit, how did they do that? Yeah, and that's the reason that has brought me to you because you have specialized within your own niche. And what I think you've done is niche and grow, okay? Um, which not a lot of people are aware it's, it's possible to do that once you stay, like you say, in your lane and you're mm -hmm. uh, focusing and things like that. But I also like how you've mentioned that you've got to start working first and then from there you will then figure out the things so what is it that made you know that this is where you wanted to be what sort of was it because something that you like because you mentioned earlier that you like writing or is it because you could find the information readily available or you no, you're gonna find this pretty funny <laughs> it's, it's mainly because i'm probably i consider myself to be one of the laziest entrepreneurs out there 
<laughs> dude, I, I work a lot, but I don't physically work because I worked for five years um, as an electrician. Your hands? My hands? Man, they're so soft and smooth. <laughs> <laughs> but if you'd have seen me five years ago, yeah. well, three, four years ago, you would have seen that they was covered in calluses, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I was doing the hard yards in, um, in life. I was in trenches eight to 12 hours a day. I was crawling through roofs. I was sticking my hand into cobwebs with like red back spiders dropping next to me. Like I was doing all that shit and I've already done it. And I said to myself, why am I getting into entrepreneurship? Because I like, I actually was with a girl, right? Um, for just over three years. And one of the, there was two massive problems. One was I was never had enough financially. So I never had the money that I wanted to do these things that I wanted. And back then I was only, and this is such a, such a crucial part of who I am is I was only making around $600 a week. And because I was a, I was a, I was two months from finishing when I quit my apprenticeship and that's a story in its own. And, and I think that's a really, really powerful story. And I think I will tell that very shortly if we've got enough time. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a very good story though, because it, it just shows the power of like decisions. Um, but what it was, was I had only $600 a week because I was a fourth year electrician. I was two months from finishing, never really did. But what it kept doing for me is I knew that there was a grind, right? And I knew that at, by the end of it, maybe I'm making $1,000 a week. For me, that was never enough. I never wanted $1,000 a week. I don't know what it was, but from day one, I always knew I wanted to do more. If, but what I thought I was going to do is own a business as an electrician. The one problem there is labor. And that's when it comes into the second thing. So I was like, okay, so I've got money sorted. It's just about time, right? It's just about patience. But what's next? Now I started to realize, okay, so I started to work in online marketing a little bit because I was trying to get a little bit more money. So I started to get a bit more money. It wasn't much, but it was an extra two, 300 bucks. It was probably about $600 a month extra. But when you're only making $200, 150 to 200 bucks a week makes a massive difference, right? My goal at that time, because I lived with my parents who were very invasive, like they love me a bit, so brilliant people, but they was very invasive. They didn't give me no privacy. And I was, um, you know, 20 years old. I had a partner. She was 23, 24. Uh, We've been together for three years. We were fucking amazing together, right? But the problem was we had no privacy. So I was like, okay, how do I get out of this situation? You know, how do we go on holidays? How do we do this? We need money. So I was like, my goal was 900 to a thousand dollars, but I couldn't wait until I was a full-time electrician. So I was trying to find ways. And what I realized was I have no time. I can't go on holiday because I have to wait until the end of the year when, when I've got one to two weeks and then I get one week every now and then sporadically through the year and we get four weeks total, but it's, it's never anything I can plan on. Right. And then we have to collaborate. Now I have to know when she's free. Is she free at the same time? I'm free. (laughs) <laughs> and then time started to become an issue. So I was like, well, maybe I don't want to be an electrician because then it's going to be huge amounts. Of, I always wanted to be self-employed. I always wanted to run the business. So technically I call that being an entrepreneur. Like if you want to own the business and you don't want anybody telling you what to do, I consider that being an entrepreneur because you're creating your own destiny, right? But was it going to give me freedom? Yeah. So as I was saying, like I realized that maybe 10 or 20 years down the track, I could eventually have the business run itself, but not fully. So I started to look at the people in the area. Again, I started looking at these people where, I, I mean, that's the thing you've got to develop from a young age. You've got to know where to look, right? And you've got to always look. And I was, I was fortunate enough to be aware to always look at where these people were. And I was lucky that I was that type of person was having a model, right? I'm happy to see what they're doing and do what they're doing. And I saw the person at the top, right? I saw the owner of the company turning, I think net revenue or something, which is net is, which is net, net gross, which one is which I always bloody forget. So gross is overall net is when you're okay. taking away the expenses. Always. I don't know why. It, even Barrack has to teach me. I always forget that one. It just annoys me. Give me two choices. I'm fucked. Give me three. I'll, I'll remember them all. Well, <laughs> so gross, right? I saw his gross. Apparently he was doing like 20 mil, which is phenomenal, right? Allegedly he was taking five, $600,000 a year home. Phenomenal, right? Everybody's quite happy with that. But the biggest issue he had was he was in Bali two to three weeks, but then he would have to come back one every, you know, one to two weeks every time to come and figure out what was going on in the business. Once there was a problem, nobody could solve it. He had to come back physically and be in the place to do it. So whenever he was doing something, it always fell apart. He always had to come back and do it. So eventually I saw him grind to something else. He quit the business and he built a holiday home in Bali. That's fine. So he's done his hard yards, but I saw him at like 50. I thought, I do not want to be 50 years old and have your freedom. 
So I don't know. There was a lot of things right in there that immediately just, you know, said to me, it was like, you've, you've got to do something different. Right. Great. <clears throat> so obviously you had all this inspiration from all these people and you've mentioned a very valid point that you got to look at people that are where you want to be so that you continuously grow yourself. Okay. Yes. So there was that Jason who had, was almost finishing his uh, electrical degree and um, you had all these wars within yourself. Is this Jason still the same Jason that we met uh, when <laughs> that was happening? Not at all. Not um, I, could, I, don't, I don't, I think it's because you grow as a person, right? Right. I think, I don't think there's anything wrong with being normal and having a job and doing all these things. But this is going to sound horrible. <laughs> but I think, I think when you want to be an entrepreneur, you are now becoming one of the elite. Because the things that we do and the people that we try to become is so much greater. And this sounds horrible again. And I, and I hope that anybody who watches this does not take it to heart. But I do, I do phenomenally strongly believe that you are trying to become the elite. And you're trying to become better in every area. Because what do we continuously do? We continuously work on leadership skills. We continuously right. work on ourselves emotionally physically, spiritually, we become this person that can accept every single person around us. We become accepting of people doing a job and saying, it's fine for you to do what you do, but they are never accepting of us. It's fine to do what you do. So all of a sudden you've got a massive gap already because we're already accepting. Like we accept people for who they are. We then continue to grow our communication skills, right? So we learn to build rapport with people. We sit there and we say, okay, so this person's done this. Why have they done that? We've got to understand it's coming from a point of, you know, they're having a struggle with their life, but if they're having that same struggle, they're going to go at us, right? So I think it's just because of the entrepreneur space, the person I needed to become today is a different path as if I would have stuck as the same person. I would have grown continually and I would have harnessed skills which would have benefited me as an electrician. However, they wouldn't have benefited me as a business owner or an influencer or, uh, or an entrepreneur in, in general. I think it's basically because the skills that you need to learn to become the person in your space is so vastly different. And whatever path you choose to be on, I mean, I believe strongly that I wouldn't have been the same person today if I would have continued to start on that same path as I am today. Do you know what I mean? Mm, mm. Just because the path changes. You just go like that. And the person that you are always growing to become changes. Great stuff. Okay, so this is, this is where possibly the viewer right now, you're watching this and you probably want to make the jump uh, from where you are right now. You possibly have a clue or an idea of the entrepreneurship journey that you got to take or oh. which you're probably fucking wrong already. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it, yeah. I think it's, I think you, you, you go through so many little intricacies until you find the entrepreneur you want to be. Right. I mean, I don't know how many fucking that went through, you know, negative digital network marketer to, I wanted to do courses and I wanted to do this. And I wanted to do that. And I finally found who I was through doing all of that. But I think, I think the person that they think they want to be right now is probably going to be vastly different by when, the, by the time they actually get there, but it's about that style in that journey. Right. Right. But I, just, I think it's a cool thing to think about. I think it does vastly change. Yes. So the, just the start is where people really need. So you've told us that you had inspiration from, you know, the likes of Dave Nelson and Ray Higdon, was it? Yeah, Ray Higdon, yeah. Great stuff. Now, somebody might be watching this right now and you become their first inspiration. Hmm. What is the one thing that you may want to tell them that from here on after watching this? <laughs> I have exactly the advice. Find what it is 100% that you are phenomenal at. Like, if you need to, list the three top things that you do that you do better than anybody you know, right? And then I want you to give that a week. Say if you do it on a Monday, I want you to come back next Monday. I want you to review it. And I want you to take off one of those things. That's what I want you to do. I want you to just fuck it off, right? I want you to say, okay, so I'm great at these three things. But what am I great? What are the two things I'm better at than these three? And I want you to grab that one, throw it away, never look at it again, right? I want you to then come back in two weeks time after having a long bloody hard think about exactly what it is that you're best at out of these two and whichever one you are hundred percent sure that you're better at when you grab the second one, throw it away. Right. And I want you to then 
Harness that. I want you to master that. I want you to become the absolute best in your space. I want you to do anything and everything that it is that you can do to become number one in that space. And that means staying in that land. Find that. That's why I mean by throw those shit away. Throw it away because you need to become number one in that space, right? How do you do that? First, you learn. What is second though? What do you need to do after you've learned? You have to execute. My advice to you and what I did to get started was I found what I was phenomenal at. I got courses online. I followed people. And then the second thing that I did was I found somebody that was growing in the space that I wanted to grow in. I said, hey, are you doing email marketing? And it happened to be an e-commerce owner. And that's where my journey started, right? He happened to be an e-commerce owner. His name's Murray Edwards. Um, a lot of the people in the e-com space would know him, right? And he was a very good friend at the time. He was in network marketing with me, same company. We both hated it. And he said, hey, Jess, I'm doing really well in e-com. Like, you need to get out of network marketing. I was like, hey, I've been doing a little research. Like, I'm, I've been getting into this space for a long time. I've just not really talked about it much. Um, how are you doing email marketing? So the second thing I want you to do is I want you to go out there and I want you to find three people that you can give your services to for free because you need to execute. You need to learn exactly what it is that works because some of the stuff you're going to learn from the experts won't work for you. It will work for them. won't work for you. You will learn what works for you, what you're better at inside of your own lane, right? And then all of a sudden you'll create that lane within the lane, right? Because you'll find what you're phenomenal at. But then once you've had those three things, this is when you can start to leverage those results. You can start to ask for testimonials. You can say, hey, look, I've done this. This is what I've done. Now you have results because you can't do anything in this world without results anymore because every single person is skeptical. So how do you get rid of skepticism? By giving them results because results builds trust. So that would be my first three things I would do is I would find what I am at absolutely the best at. I would throw the other two things away. I would then find like master it. I would harness those skills and I would start to execute, do it for free. And then from there, I would leverage those results. I would get testimonials and I would ask for referrals. And that is, that is the basics of how I built my six figure agency in six months. I'm on multiple six figures within six months because I did all of these things. And one more thing I'd like to add in there, which I didn't, but it's a very key thing and it should be a key thing of your entire life is always be building absolutely phenomenal relationships with every single person around you because you have no idea who can become someone or who may be already someone that is not trying to front. They're not trying to stunt on you and say like, I'm, I'm a big dog. Some of them are big dogs that you don't even know about. And you have to be providing phenomenal value to them. You have to be giving so much more than you're taking. And then one day that relationship can you know, be a bountiful kind of like relationship. One day you can get something back from it that you wasn't hoping to get back from it, but one day it can be fruitful. And that's what happened to me. I built phenomenal relationships for such a long time. I mastered what I was doing, right? And I found a land within a land. I then did it for free. I then leveraged those results. And then those relationships became fruitful because I was now fantastic at what I did. I had results from people within that social circle and I excelled. So from that is that would be my get started. <laughs> that is phenomenal, man. Jason, I was taking notes if you noticed frantically because <laughs> I didn't want to. got a recording, you can just watch straight over it. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I also want to add all that in the show notes. Now, talking about show notes, um, you might have somebody you've inspired right now with what you just said, and how can they get a hold of you or how can they tap into whatever you've created so that they too? can have phenomenal results or they can learn from you. Dude, I'm such a super personal person, hey. Like, it's just Facebook. If you, if you want to hear from me or if you want to speak to me more, if you want to be around me or, or in my social circle, whatever, it's literally just Facebook, man. Like, I'm... It's actually funny where I go backwards on that. Like, I'm not, like, one of the big ones. Like, I don't do that shit. Like, of course, I've got my email list. I've got these things. But if you really want to get to know me, it's my Facebook, right? right. Because my Facebook is... It's a combination of... It, it's me as a business person. So I get out there my inspiration, but I get out there in my own way, right? In my own flavor. I think you've seen some of my posts. You don't understand that mine's not really similar to everyone else's. Like I still have, have my own essence in there. But I speak to a lot of people. Um, there's tons of people throughout Facebook. I've helped just, you know, just because I want to. There's one other thing that I wanted to ask, which is, you know, a funny statement within the uh, online space. You know how... Uh, Max Zuckerberg has this one wardrobe every single time and, oh, Steve, Jobs, yeah. and Steve Jobs has um, 
you know, the hippie style and everything else. But I'm looking at you, you you know, good, calm, nicely, uh, nice beard. And I see sometimes you really suit up. You know, I really appreciate the way you get up, sir. Um, how does that go uh, coincide with your personal brand? Or is any of that really important? Or can you just elaborate? Because a lot of people yeah. are confused with that aspect. You see, I... Uh, passionately hair. Have you seen that meme that goes around the entrepreneur space that says like, you know, Mark's like dressed like this. Like, sorry, no, Mark's, no, there's one person dressed with the, the suit. Right. Uh, and there's Mark like dressed in, I think, in just like jeans or some shit. Or it's, it's from a movie. He was like, think- when it was that movie one. And he's right. like, oh, you know, this guy dressed in jeans and a sh- normal like t-shirt. Hey. And then there's this guy and this guy in the suit is the one that works for the one in the t-shirt and jeans or some shit, right? <laughs> I fucking hate that. Because I don't believe anybody should dress. Like, this is what pisses me off, right? Because hustle culture is all about breaking free, right? It's all about breaking free of rules in society, right? But we've created our own rules within the hustle society. So now it's gone backwards. Now we're now creating a society where people should adhere to rules. But we're taught to break rules but adhere to these certain rules within the hustle society, which is don't dress too nice. Don't try and look good to front and other people. No, do what it is that makes you feel good because the feeling surpasses the thought, right? Whatever you feel will help you think. When you feel good, you start to think good. Positive thinking is not a fucking real thing. It's what you feel. It's positive feeling first. If you you feel like shit, you cannot positively think your way out of it. It's impossible. You can't go, wow, I feel like absolute dog's balls right now. I'm just going to think really positive things. I'm going to imagine my Ferrari. It's not going to work, right? It doesn't work. But ask this. When you feel on top of the world, not any amount of negative thinking can get you down because that feeling surpasses that thought. Great. So I think if you dress nice and you feel fantastic, do you. Exactly. Don't, right. believe, don't listen to what anyone else says. Just do it. I really think that whoever is listening to this show today has really learned quite a lot. And if you haven't picked yourself um, the 20 steps to starting your own six-figure digital marketing agency, make sure you do. Everything will be in the comments at the bottom. And also Jason's um, links, I'm going to put them in the show notes um, right at the bottom there. It's been phenomenal, sir. Your vast amount of knowledge, exposure, and your time today is greatly appreciated. Um, I appreciate you too, dude. Thank you so much for like allowing me to jump on. And you know, whoever sees this, I, I really hope it does help. And I just I'm grateful for the opportunity to you know expose myself to somebody and hopefully you know inspire someone. Great stuff. Obviously, you've already done well. You've already done massive from the electrician that was about to finish in, in, in about two months to where you are right now. What sort of process are you taking yourself through to continually grow just so that the listener or whoever is watching this really gets to know that it does not stop. It, you have uh, to go. Never stops. Um, so obviously I, I'm going to say something that I don't, I don't agree with here and I think everyone should do it, but I don't read as much as I should mainly because I'm, I, I find I struggle so, so much to sit down and read. So I listen to audibles. Um, I've not been listening to them enough. But what I think you should do and what, what it is when you get to my level, I think the next thing is emotional and financial leverage on yourself. I found a mentor that I pay monthly to keep track on me. He kicks my ass, right? Every now and then he goes, look, you're not doing what you could be doing. Get at it, Right. Number one, it's emotional leverage because I, I have to know physically that I'm going to come up to him one day, you know, in, in a week or in two weeks, I have to go into his office and have a chat with him. And I say, hey, look, this is what I've done. And emotionally, that's going to kick my ass because he's going to say, hey, look, you should be doing better than this. So I know I have leverage on myself because, and creating leverage on yourself could be even those financial goals that you have on your wall, right? That could be emotional leverage. Build emotional leverage so that you are continuously forcing yourself to grow because you know that where you are right now, understand where you are right now, understand where you want to be. And that's called number one, it's called accepting, right? It's kind of accepting where you are and then moving forward. So allow yourself to always grow. But the financial one was the mentor. And I would highly, highly I'd like suggest once you get to my level, which is multiple six figures, I, you can even do it at multiple five, but I mean, it's probably gonna be a stretch in your budget, but 
or you can even get a cheaper one. But when you get to my stage, invest in a mentor because they're going to have the steps that you need to take. They're going to know where you need to go. And you're going to have that financial leverage because you know you're paying these people to do these things. So now you want results. Great stuff. Well, Jason, this is probably one of the best uh, interviews we've had so far. I'm glad. <laughs> really thank you for that. No worries. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't, I didn't dress up, but <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think I want everyone to see that. Like, this is a home-based business, guys. You <laughs> can dress how you want at home. I don't dress like this when I go out. Yeah. No, but they will see you. Dress you want. You get, you, get to, you get to chill it. I will chill. Wait, ready? Ready? You want to see my videographer? Are you ready? <laughs> All right. Videographer's just chilling. It's just like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> see, he's just chilling too. Look, guys. You can do anything that you want. I guarantee it. Just keep going, keep pushing forward. And just imagine like, look at me. I was a fucking, I was an electrician. And a lot of people said that I would never get anywhere in life. And I'm, I'm only what, I'd only just turned 24. Fuck the world's your oyster. Learn these types of things. Learn to become that type of person that you need to become. Follow the right types of people. Just putting the work. And I think the biggest key takeaway for anything in ever, and I did a video about it, you saw me, um, is just execution. I think that's what sets me apart from most entrepreneurs is the fact I actually do shit. If I say I'm going to do it, I actually do it. So that's the one thing that these people need to do are watching this. I can give you absolutely every single thing that you need to know. I could sit you right next to me. I could teach you step by step exactly what it is that you need to do to grow a business, but most of you won't actually do it. And that's why most of you will not attend freedom because you don't actually sit there and you want to actually put in the work and you want to actually execute for various reasons. You could be fear of failure. It could be fear of success. It could be not enough money. It could be that you're lazy or you don't really want it. You haven't got the right why. But if you take anything away from today, there is no magic bullet. There is no pill. You have to put in the work and you have to execute every single day. Well, thank you, kind sir. We won't take that no much time today. This has been phenomenal. I'm glad. Thank you so much for having me on board, dude. And um, as per usual, if there's anything you ever need from me, please feel free to hit me up. My Facebook is always open. Same thing for anyone else. It's Jason K. Williamson. If you ever search me, more than happy to accept friend requests. If the list is full, send me a little message. Say why I should add you. I'm more than happy to clear up some space and put somebody on there. And I will more than happy share my knowledge and everything that I know to help them out. So Again, thank you so much for having me on, dude. I really appreciate it. Great stuff. Well, obviously, you've just watched Jason and he's given us a wealth of information. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also share this video. Um, the show notes of everything we've just talked about are at the bottom. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day.